Sometimes the unlikeliest of things just seem to work together. This is a great example. A man-made object like this, a piece of sculpture, and yet in the right setting of the Dorset countryside, stunning. It's when you see them in this sort of environment that you appreciate just the size of the sculptures. As you get up close, but if you go over there, you'll see them and they look quite small. And this is one of the things about putting sculptures into a sculpture park, the sort of the environment where they should be. You put this into a gallery and it looks out of scale, it's out of context, it dominates the space. Here it can blend in. This is called Isis, perhaps your most well-known work? Yes, this is uh, probably, yes, the most iconic work. Um, this was placed into Hyde Park in 2009 and it was the first sculpture to go into Hyde Park for over 50 years. And it's also in um, His Royal Highness Prince Charles's garden in Highgrove. I've flown into Heathrow over London and I've looked down and I've seen Isis from the plane. Oh, that must be <laughs> yeah. a lovely Which is quite a, quite a feeling it's and, it, and it's, it's got that scale that you, you can yeah. do that. such a surprise when you come down. This is called Search for Enlightenment. It's the transience of humanity and the vastness of time. And if you look up into the stars, into the universe, you just realize how small we are and insignificant we are. What is the process that you use to get to this point? Uh, I would make this out of any material. I actually made these out of foam and then it would go to the foundry to be moulded and cast. Really? Sometimes you think, how did I come up with that idea? How did it evolve? Because it, it, it does evolve and it's a very slow process. You can't just suddenly say it happened like that. And do you encourage people to touch your sculptures? Because you do want to, don't yeah. you? You go to a lot of museums and galleries and they don't allow you to touch, but actually so much information comes in through our hands and you just feel there's the need to touch it. This is very different from the other pieces. Yes, it's to a certain extent it's an evolution from the pure abstracts. There's something about actually putting movement into sculpture which is mesmerising, or I find it mesmerising, just watching it gently sway in the wind. When we first opened here we had a gentleman walking around, and he was an elderly gentleman, and he said, uh, you know, I never really understood sculpture until now, now I get it. And that, to me, is just fantastic. Can you imagine doing anything else? There's nothing else I'd rather do. It's a way of life, it's a sort of a calling and it's something you've just got to do. It's what I would call the artistic imper imperative. You have an idea, you've got to realise it. And so, no, this is, this is what I hope I will be able to do forever. Mm -hmm.